Hi everyone, so today I wanted to talk about the possibility of building an interposer in order to make it possible to install a 28 nanometer GPU into the backwards compatible 60 gig PlayStation 3 models. And as you can see here, I've got two super slim boards. They're very important for this research because they're slightly different. And here you can see that one board takes 40 nanometer RSX and 45 nanometer cell. And the other board also has a 45 nanometer cell, but it comes with a 28 nanometer RSX. So because this 28 nanometer processor is much smaller than the 40 nanometer one, what we can do is we can desolder all of these processors here and then just trace their connections. Obviously the smaller chip will be connected in a slightly different configuration. The layout of the pads is going to be different. But hopefully after desoldering all of these I will be able to trace the connections correctly and then I will be able to lay out a foundation for the interposer. So yeah, let's get to desoldering then. Right, so now that I've desoldered all of the main chips from each board as you can see, uh, now we can start making some comparisons. So we already have the pinout for this RSX right here. It's exactly the same as the 65 and 90 nanometer versions and we have the manuals for that. What we don't have the manual for is this small 28 nanometer version. So now I can begin to trace all the copper tracks and some of them are already visible here. They are clearly connecting to cell and uh, what I will do is I will just compare it to the other motherboard and try to outline the similarities and the differences. So that is the basic principle for this whole idea. So after spending a lot of time on tracing these connections, I finally made a prototype pinout map, which you can see here. And unfortunately it's still not complete, uh, because there are some empty pads, as you can see in these few spots, and also some mystery pads that I couldn't quite trace. But uh, the most essential traces have been found. I also made a pinout of the components that RSX is connecting to. For instance, this component is the HDMI chip. And it's different in super slim motherboards if you compare it to the original 60 gig model. Actually, all of these parts are different. So, for instance, this is the clock generator. And there's no data sheets for any of these, so I had to trace them manually. I discovered two lines going to, to the VRM controller, there's also the DAC, uh, digital audio converter, uh, syscon. The image of the syscon can be found on DevWiki and here I just wrote the legs uh, that the RSX is connecting to uh, based on that image. And here is the analog chip, this is what handles the analog outputs. So yeah, this has been done just with multimeter Unfortunately, I discovered that there's very little in common with the previous revisions of RSX. This 28 nanometer processor has been redesigned rather significantly. The only thing that hasn't been changed is the flex input-output interface. These are the green pads here. And they're pretty much the same as they are in all the other RSX chips. Yeah, I have written a more detailed write-out in the Excel sheet. For instance, there is the flex input-output interface, uh, pinouts and other stuff. But again, this is still a work in progress, so nothing has been finalized yet. So another thing we need to do is we need to measure all the voltages here because I'm pretty sure they have been changed in some way for the 28 nanometer RSX and uh, yeah we need to confirm that and I'm gonna show you in a moment how I did it. After some clever poking around with a multimeter, I managed to trace these main voltages that RSX is using and all of these are also test points on the motherboard, so I soldered the wires to each of them and this way I can measure them when the system is powered on. You can see these are the wires that are connected to the test points on the motherboard. 
So I'm just gonna turn it on and see what kind of voltages I will get. Um, I've marked some of these. Um, I already know that these are all gonna be the same. But um, let's just start with RSX VDDC. It's nearly one volt. I think it pretty much counts as one volt. The next one is RSX VDDR. which is 0 0.9 this one is VDDIO and we get 1.2 and I've tried also testing it during the game and these don't change at all they always stay the same so yeah So here I've made a comparison table for all the voltages and there are a couple of differences here. It starts with VDDC. The newer version will have a bit lower voltage than the older one but it shouldn't be a problem because it's controlled by the VRM so it will just give as much as RSX requests. For the VDDR it's also quite a standard procedure by now because the same voltage mod has to be done for the Frankenstein PS3 and the only slight difference in this case is that it's 0 0.9 precisely. The next three are exactly the same. The next difference is in the F VDDQ and PLL. It's 1.5 volts in the newer processor against 1.8 volt in the older one and it also appears to be merged into one voltage line on the 28 nanometer version. So the voltage modding part for this chip has already gotten a bit more complicated. Now there's something else to consider. If you look at the schematic from the Kecha models, you will see that there are quite a lot of connections going from the EEGS, which is the PS2 chip, to the RSX. And they are marked as VI, which I suspect means video inputs. But I haven't researched enough yet, are they inputs into the EEGS or are they inputs from the EEGS into the RSX? In any case, these are very important because this is how the backwards compatibility is designed on these boards. You need to have connections going from the PS2 chip to the RSX chip. And it's a similar situation on the Catch C models. The only difference is that they removed the Emotion Engine CPU. So now it's just the GS GPU that's assisting with the backwards compatibility operation. And actually on COK002 boards, even the regular video output that's coming from the RSX goes through the GS chip first and only then to the HDMI encoder and then to the screen. But that's beside the point. What's most important however is that if you want the backwards compatibility to work, the 28 nanometer must have these same connections present. And this is the tricky part because so far I haven't been able to confirm if it has them at all. And if you look at this image I made, I have tried to outline some of the points that may possibly be the video inputs that are necessary for the PS2 chips. However, we don't have the datasheet, so at the moment it's impossible to know what these pads actually are. And yeah, it says that a lot of them are not connected, but this is only on the motherboard. I don't know what their purpose actually is on the chip itself, so it's quite likely that Sony has completely stripped this chip of the PS2 backwards compatibility function, because if you think about it, they have redesigned it quite radically, and if their goal was to reduce the size of the die and the size of the substrate, I would imagine that they most likely have removed all the unused contacts. Because the PS2 connections haven't been needed since the first original 60 gig models, and this was their latest revision, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. However, at the same time, it's a little strange that they still left so many not connected pads, so there is still slight hope that some of these pads may have the function to connect to the PS2 processors. But in any case, I wouldn't hold my breath. Please do keep in mind that these are just my educated guesses, and I can't claim 100% one way or the other. 
In any case, this was still a fun project and you could leave a comment on what you think about the whole situation. Theoretically, it's still possible to attempt to design this interposer for boards that don't have the hardware BS2 backwards compatibility. But then again, personally, I don't see the point because the 28 nanometer would not offer any significant advantages other than the reduced thermal output. But feel free to research this further if you like. I should also post these findings onto dev wiki pages, so that way it can be preserved. I think it's time to end this video here, and you can give a like if you enjoyed it. So thanks for watching and see you next time.